up, Airsoft players? Welcome to Handguns.com. Today I'm here to talk about not exactly a self-explanatory gun to operate and get going, and that gun is the VI-3181. Uh, this gun is notably uh, the cusp of where a low-power low electric gun starts and a middle-power electric gun starts, as this gun uses a gearbox, most notably a plastic gearbox, that resembles a Tokyo Marui version 2-style gearbox. And uh, it can push pellets at around 300 FPS with .12 BBs and uh, 280 with uh, 12 gram or 20 gram BBs. And um, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good like half step into the world of middle electric guns, and you know a step out of the uh, lower electric guns. But enough about the history. Let's talk about how to get this thing together. Some of you probably already are cursing this manual due to the fact that it's in terrible English, and we're aware of that. Thus, why we're making this video. That aside, you know what you do with this manual? You throw it aside. Okay, so we'll start with the most basic function and the most important function of this gun. And that is um, you want to learn how to put the battery in there. And uh, the battery, there's one of three ways you can put the battery in here. Most notably, the um, most notably, the most easy one to do at first is probably to put it inside the the PEQ aiming module, PEC box, whatever you want to call it. I uh, just know that this is a on a real gun. This is a multi-use laser sight, which you can uh, use for IR goggles, uh, different settings, and etc. 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 So this isn't the real deal. This is purely a battery box. Uh, open it up, and the battery just goes right there. To get it open, um, there's a let's not drop it back first. And uh, there's a uh, circular uh, like latch tab right here. I don't know what you'd call that, but I guess it's a latch. Okay, so uh, you can just grab that, take your finger, and just pry it off like that. Be careful not to use too much force because you can break this tab right here, which uh, renders this whole idea useless, and the battery will just keep flopping out. Okay, so what you want to do first is you want to install this on the gun. How you install this, um, it's like with any 20 millimeter uh, M1913 mil spec rail, uh, Picatinny rail, waiver rail, whatever you want to call it, it's a 20 millimeter rail. Um, notably, this gun comes with the 20 millimeter rail uh, heat shield on it at first. And um, if you notice, there's portions that have like a rib texture to them, and there's a shorter one right here that exposes uh, some of the teeth. And um, the. Um, these are just rail covers. You can take these off just by simply pushing in on this metal tab right here and sliding them off like so. And that, if I can get these off. It's a similar principle with the shorter ones. And, uh, yeah. Uh, usually the most notable way to put it on is usually the easiest, and that's putting it on the top rail right here, as you can see in one of the photos. Um, I can Kind of take that back about this manual. It has some pretty helpful photos on the uh, front. It gives you an idea of what configuration you want. Uh, this one is impossible, as this one doesn't come with uh, the full stock attachment, which comes with certain models of this gun, which we do not carry. And um, yeah, like here's the one with the uh, here's the one with the old style MOD grenade launcher uh, setup. Like you can have the standard foregrip. Um, you know, the standard AR-15 style foregrip on the top and the grenade launcher on the bottom. And it has a uh, crane stock, which is, on this gun, uh, adds as an extra support for your cheek. And uh, with this model, as you can see, it's the same thing, but with the full stock, which we do not have this model. So, okay. This one right here actually has the uh, CQB setup. On certain models of this gun, you're able to screw the, uh, the barrel off, but on this particular one, you cannot. And, uh, yeah, this serves as kind of a, 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 you know, a basis of what you would want to do and what you want it to get to look like this right here or this or this. Um, yeah, so we're going to go over how to install everything in detail. So let's, again, throw that aside. Okay. So zoom out. Okie doke. There you go. Okay, so as you can see, we have all the accessories right here. So let's show how to install the battery. What you want to do is you want to attach this portion to the top rail. Um, as I said before, you can put it on any one of these rails. Just take off the rail covers. So You can open the attachment for this by unscrewing this large um, 
knob right here. We'll get a zoom in on it. It's right here, so you should be able to just unscrew it. You don't want to unscrew it too far because, yeah, that happens. You can lose the nut that holds this in place, and uh, you can just easily replace it by finding it on the ground and putting it back in. Okay, so you just want to screw it a little bit, just enough to where it'll clear the rails a little bit wider, and then you just want to put it on. Okay. So, take the gun, the top rail. Okay, so you can see the Tamiya connector for the gun is right here, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. But before attaching it to the gun, what you want to do is you want to take the battery that comes with it, and you want to put it inside the gearbox. This is uh, the part that's not self-explanatory. I don't believe that's in, uh, explained in the manual. And uh, you want to open the pec box as showed before. Okay. And on the side of the pec box, you want to get zoom in on that, and I'll show you. There's a U-shaped groove right here, as you can see right there. You want the ends of the battery, or the wires that come out of the battery, to sit inside this groove. So they don't pinch against the outside casing. So you just want to put the battery in, like so. Drop it in. And guide. And you want to guide it into the groove, like that. See? It should sit something like that. Thus, you move on to the next step. You put the backing back on. Make sure that this tab right here faces the bottom. And make sure that this tab faces the top. The top has a circular peg right here that locks into place. So you just want to... Simple as that, no blood loss. Okay, zoom out. And our zoom likes to skip. Okay, so you want to attach your battery like so. There you go. Everything's connected, so take the top of the gun. Okay, slowly spread the, uh, the connector to where it will fit properly. Sometimes that'll happen. Okay, so if that does happen, replace the nut and uh, make sure the knob is in place. The knob or the nut goes over the knob. You should be able to get a visual idea about it at first by looking at the gun from the outside. So, okay. Tighten it down. Don't over tighten it because you'll strip the uh, you'll strip the nut, and you don't want that because that just means that it's useless after that. Okay, and you should look something like this. Okay, the battery's properly installed. Now you're able to fire the gun. Okay, some of you may want the crane stock for an added cheek rest, and this is easily installed by taking the LE stock that comes on its stock. Uh, stock, sorry, double negative, and um, what you can do is you can um, grab the attachment lever, it's shaped at a 90 degree angle, as you can see it right here, I'm going to zoom in on it for you, so you can get a good view, okay, you can see the adjustment lever right here, what you want to do is you want to grab it like so, upside down, give you a good idea, grab it like so, pull up on it, like this, and then slide it off like that, okay, zoom out, Follow the same step with the uh, crane stock, like so. Lift up on it, lift up on the adjustment um, angle thing, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Okay, so it slides on there, and that should be pretty straight. You should be able just to like so. And there you have your crane stock. If you like that, that's pretty cool. All right, and some of you may want the ease of handling of a foregrip. Uh, the foregrip like this and this is fairly this is easier to do than a standard one uh the standard one of these style guns because um they have just a pull switch right here and you just pull down on and slide over the rail and get a zoom in on that there you go and you see the switch right there you just push down on it push down on it to uh disengage the latch and lift up on it and you just see the latch it's right okay so set uh set wherever you feel having the um the switch push against your hands, and let's go zoom out. Okay. You can put that on any of the rails, but most people and uh, recommend that you put it on the bottom rail. 
Uh, first you want to remove the rail cover, the short rail cover right here, and you just want to push down on the metal tab and slide it either forward or backwards. If you want to take the bottom portion off, you can. Okay, so this is usually the more difficult way, but just for the ease of uh, myself, I'm going to take it off the front way because I don't want to have to take the bottom portion off. Okay. Usually you can just lift it off because there's a groove cut into the railing right here. Once you get into that point on uh, tooth number one, so I can believe there's 14 teeth on these, and you can see the groove cut right there. See? Okay. Zoom out. And okay. So take your foregrip, pull down on the latch, and you want to slide it over the rail, like so. Put it on whatever position is most comfortable to you. Most people have um, four teeth exposed on the rear, or three, like so. So you can have that. Uh, this one in particular is a defective model, so it explains the noise. Okay, so. Alrighty. This is one of the basic configuration setups, okay? So after you've done all that, you can install the grenade launcher, which we'll cover in the next segment. The grenade launcher is a, uh, a peripheral accessory that only has one function, and that's to shoot one BB. And uh, it has a battery compartment inside of it, which we'll show you in a moment. And that's another way to install it. So 